I'm Val from Quilty Pleasures and we're going to be launching our really exciting My Favorite Color is Moda uh, Sew Along program. And so we've got the kits all ready uh, for you to, to, to buy. We won't be sewing for another week or so, but you do have some prep to do. So I wanted to talk today about prepping your fabric, cutting your fabric, getting ready to, to start with the sew along. So we have two colorways available. These are all Bella solids. This is Coastal Cool. Um, nice blues and teals, very calm, very zen. And then my personal favorite, you can tell, is Primrose Garden, which is more of the, the pinks and corals and some, some cool greens to tone it down a little bit. So we have both colorways available and they are packaged with the pattern. So you're all set to go. This is the pattern. The pattern is shown only in the Primrose Garden colorway, but don't worry about that. If you have chosen the Coastal Cool, we will have uh, color sheets with the blocks and all of the translation into the colors for you so that you don't have to uh, think too hard about what you're doing. But the pattern is written in the, the Primrose Garden colorway. This program was meant to take, I don't know, 19 months. Like there's, there's 19 blocks and there are 10 different fabrics and um, it's going to make a big quilt. It finishes at, hold on, 81 by 99. So it's a, a big, it's a queen size quilt. And it's really interesting because um, it's a sampler quilt, mainly half square triangles and rectangles and quarter square triangles, but it's arranged very differently. It, it uh, Things kind of interconnect and, and your blocks are all different sizes. So it's really interesting when it's put together. But we're going to work on a block at a time, um, probably one block the first month and then we will, that, this is it by the way, this is the block number one, it's 36 inches square, so it goes together quickly, but it gives a lot of impact and uh, it'll get you started in grand, grand form. Um, and then we'll, we can probably do two blocks a session after that because you'll, you'll have the skills to do it. It is great for a confident beginner and I'm going to give you tips along the way. Every block will be, we'll have a little intro and, and some tips and, and techniques to, to keep you on track. So today um, I just wanted to talk about getting your fabric ready. As I said, these are all Bella solids. Um, there's a big debate, wash, don't wash before you start. I did not wash. It's a lot of fabric. It would mean a lot of ironing and I didn't want to do that. So I'm just leaving it as it is and I'm finding it very nice to work with. There's a nice body to the fabric with the, um, the sizing that's in it from the manufacturer and I'm, I'm really enjoying working with it. So I did not wash it, but I did press it. Um, they've been folded up and traveled who knows where. So I did press out the, the worst of the, the creases and um, then I'm just going to show you what I do next to do my cutting so that you can be as accurate as possible and get started on a successful project. So in your book, it gives you cutting maps for each of your colors. And um, I highly suggest before you start, you find your color palette, the one that you've chosen, and just when you have little scraps, put them in so that you know which one is color one, which one is color two. It'll keep you um, on track and you'll be a lot happier, I'm sure, if you have that reference to, to go back to. There are some basic piecing instructions, but as I said, we're going to go over that as well. But for the cutting, Every fabric, so we're looking at fabric one today, every fabric has a map that shows you the cutting strategy for that piece of fabric. And 
it gives it visually and it gives it in um, in words <laughs> and numbers so that you can you can double check your measurements and make sure that you've cut everything that you need as I was cutting my strips I ticked off which ones I had cut at the top and then as I cut my pieces I ticked those off as well double checked it with the list at the bottom and then you get another chance to check it when you're doing your actual sewing too so there are lots of opportunities to make sure that you've got everything you need and you're not caught short um, I found there was a lot of cutting in this as I said 10 fabrics, many, many blocks. I could cut three blocks worth at a time, and that was kind of enough for me. Um, and, it, and it works well. You, the way the map is laid out, you don't have to stick to a particular order. Uh, you do have to cut the sizes they tell you, but you can kind of do them in any order. And I found that doing three blocks at a time was all I could, could take. So we're going to show you how to set your fabric up and some different cutting methods to, to get your cutting started. So I have been working on blocks. I'm up to block six already. So my, my fabric one piece has, has gotten significantly shorter, but it started out fairly lengthy. But setting up your fabric for cutting is the same no matter what length we're doing. Our rulers do not reach the full width of the fabric, so we have to fold it. And the, the important thing is to fold your fabric correctly so that it's nice and straight and you don't get a V-shaped strip after you've finished cutting. So it's very important to get your fabric lined up the way you want it. And what I do, whoops, is I take the two selvages, because I can assume that those are straight. And, okay, I'm gonna exaggerate this to show you how, how this can go wrong. So if I put those selvages together, so they're, they're all lined up, you can see the kind of wrinkle in my fabric. It is not folded straight. This is not going to, if I put it down on my table, I'm going to end up with wrinkly bits and obviously it's not going to work. So what I do is I just hold the fabric between my thumb and index fingers and kind of scooch it along, keep those edges straight, give it a little shake every once in a while until I don't see any obvious wrinkles. And then when I put it down on my table, there are no weird little pleats at the folded edge. Okay, Amy, now we need to come up here and look at how to cut. So once I have folded my fabric, you see it's been folded in my, in my case that I carried it in. I'm going to put that fold along the line of my cutting mat. I don't use the lines of my cutting mat for measuring, but I do use the lines for keeping myself straight. So I've got my fold along that cutting line. And if I'm, if I'm using a regular 24 inch ruler, like this one, I don't actually need to fold my fabric at all. I'm just gonna move these out of the way. And when I'm going to cut, if I have my line against the fold at the other end, I should also be straight against the selvage. And that looks pretty good. So you can do your cutting with a 24 inch ruler. That's perfectly okay. I prefer when I'm doing a lot of strip cutting like this project calls for, to use the stripology ruler. And I have two choices. This is the extra large, which is 20, oh, I had it upside down, sorry, uh, 20 inches 
wide so I can, can cut a half a meter of fabric in one go without rearranging my ruler. Or there's the uh, Stripology Squared ruler, which um, goes to 12 and a half inches, so it's not, it's not quite as wide, but does the same job and uh, is perfectly fine for this. So I'm just going to show you how the, the extra large ruler will work. It is not quite deep enough, the ruler isn't deep enough, to do my whole width of fabric. So I'm going to have to put another fold into it. And this is where you really have to keep your wits about you and stay straight. So I'm going to put my fabric along that fold and I'm going to fold it up again so that it will fit the size of my ruler. And here I'm using my lines on the other side now as well. So I'm going to just fold that, smooth it. Feel at the folds to make sure there aren't any lumps or bumps or things that have kind of doubled over on themselves because that, uh, that won't do you any good. Okay, so I'm happy with I'm happy with this. I'll double check it with my ruler, but you can see on the edge here things don't match up. So I'm going to clean that up with the stripology ruler. It's um, a one-step process, so it's great. So I'm going to this is my my baseline. Amy, you might want to come over here and look over my shoulder. So. I am taking this bottom line on the ruler and lining it up against the bottom fold of my fabric. Double checking up here, the 13 inch line is along the fold there and it's not quite on, oh there, I just had to scooch it a bit. There, that's good. So now I'm straight along the top, I'm straight along the bottom and my salvage, here it is. The, that white line is following along the edge of the salvage. So I am confident that I have folded everything at um, 90 degree angles, I guess it is. And it's going to not have a wow in it. A rotary cutter. Okay, I have to move over. <laughs> So I'm going to start by trimming off this uh, uneven edge here. And I'm starting at the zero line and I'm just going straight up and whoops, I'm not moving my ruler. Now, if I look at my map, I'm going to cut a seven and a quarter inch strip from fabric number one, which is this one. I've just cleaned up my edge and now I need to move over and cut a quarter or seven and a quarter inches. The stripology ruler has, it, it's primarily designed to cut in half inch increments, but the good thing is with this ruler, it also allows you to do quarter inches. So I'm just gonna take that piece off that we trimmed and these dotted lines are the quarter inch increments and I'm just going to scoot that over so that now that dotted line is on the edge of my fabric. My top and bottom lines are still nice and square. I'm happy. And I've added a quarter here. I'm going to the seven slot over here, which gives me seven and a quarter. I double check on my map. That's the measurement I want. And boom, done. If I wanted to do another strip, uh, I've already cut one seven inch strip, so I'm, I need to cut another seven inch strip. Um, so I've got my seven and a quarter that I've done here, plus seven is 14. I can cut that strip at the same time and not have to move my ruler, not have to remeasure. It's it's all good. And the weight of the ruler keeps your fabric nice and steady.
So they look very similar, right? Seven and a quarter, seven. Label them. Get some masking tape and write those measurements on them or put them into baggies. Anything that'll kind of keep you organized, label them. Now I'm going to need to re subcut them. So I'm going to put my seven aside, pretend I've labeled it, that I do as I preach. And I'm just going to pin these edges together so that I don't have to start totally from scratch when I do my next cuts. Okay, so that's it for fabric number one. So I'm going to open up my strip. If I open it all the way, you can see it's nice and straight. There's no V shape to it. It's, it's nice and straight. So I'm very happy with that. So now I'm going to put it back together again. And again, I like to use the, the lines on my mat just to make sure that everything is nice and square. I don't want things shifting or getting knocked around. Um, so on this one, I'm going to cut, a, it says for block 18 from the seven and a quarter inch strip, I need to cut two seven and a quarter inch squares. My fabric is doubled here, so I only need to make one cut and I will get two pieces. Again, I want to cut off the selvage edge, so I'm going to put my zero line just inside the selvage. I'm looking nice and square there, so I'm going to trim that off. Now I need to do seven and a quarter, so that comes off and I move over and put my quarter inch there. Line her up, good, seven, because seven and a quarter is seven and a quarter. And there's my my two seven and a quarter inch squares. Now that was for block 18. So I'm ahead of the game now. I could just mark those off. I've cut them, they're done, and um, I can can then cut the other pieces that I need from, from that strip. The stripology ruler is great. At the, this is the extra large one and I really like it for cutting those strips and for getting me started. Once I'm at this point with smaller strips, um, you might want to use the whoops, stripology mini because it's just a little easier to to maneuver because you don't have all this big plastic and everything but it's entirely up to you everything you can do with the mini you can also do with the with the extra large it's just a little bit um, more to to handle the nice thing about the mini ruler is that it has on the one side it does full inches and half inch increments but if you flip it over it it does the addition for you so that if you do your quarter inch increments, you don't have to do the one quarter plus seven. It doesn't go up that high, but you could do the one quarter plus four. And if you use this line to line up your edge, there's your four and a quarter line and you don't have to kind of do a double think. It, it does it for you. So I think that's kind of the best way to approach the cutting. Um, very important to stay organized. So do use baggies or clips or something to label your pieces. And um, if you have any questions, contact us here if you have any problems. There is extra fabric in your kit in case there are little boo-boos along the way, but we also saved some fabric so there are extra fat quarters available if something really goes wrong. But I think you'll be fine. And if you have any problems, let us know and we'll be happy to help. Okay, so um, get cutting. Don't be too ambitious. Just do a couple blocks at a time and, uh, 
and I think you'll have fun when it comes to the sewing part and we'll be doing that what next week maybe April 1st April 1st ish yeah so next week ish okay so happy happy cutting and um, take breaks don't do it late at night don't do it after you've been drinking um, concentrate measure twice cut once okay have fun <laughs>